So I'm back for the afternoon. I want to see if I could get a trade to catch this guy up here. Um, a little above my limit, but my daily, you know, mental limit, but whatever. Um, gonna go for 60 and then 70 and 100 and I'll probably add on another 10 when we pull down a little bit Order submitted. Right there. Uh, so I'm going to take some scalps and sim. I'm just using two alpines. I don't think that... Um, you know, experimentally wise, I see using a wide stop with this strategy works really well, but no stop doesn't work really well. So you have to have some stop. And I think that the most recent major pivot has to be the stop. So if you're entering up in here, your stop should be here. There's no reason to bust your whole account on one trade. And that's ridiculous. So that's what I'm doing. Um, so my pivot will be here. But I don't have an entry yet. Uh, my long-term bar is green. My short-term bars are green. I need to pull back to the 10 EMA first. And given how close we're getting, I might not get it here. But, you know, that's all right. We still need to follow the rules. And the rules are price should be above the 10 EMA. The 10 EMA should be above the, EM, the, the 50 moving average ribbon, which is what this gray area is. And it should be clearly above, like here. Not inside. Inside means chop, range and chop. Like right here is not an entry. These are good entries. The long term bar is green. The short term bar is green. Price is above the ribbon. 10 EMA is above the ribbon. The rib price is above the 10 EMA. We get a pullback. We have one entry. All right, so we're, here we go. We've come above. We've pulled back. Here's one, two, Three. I don't take more than three entries in a run and I want these candles to be green if I'm taking a long or red if I'm taking a short um, remember these are we're following the trend the only way this really works is if you follow the trend all right so we've got an entry I was a little order late, so filled. I'm gonna get it now I should have got it right there hold on one two yeah that's good we're not on the third one, too. It's making the third one now. Um, where is my... Uh, I'm just watching this one. This is micros. Stop filled. Order filled. I hate having um, scaling accounts. I don't like that about this. Like if I can trade five contracts, let me trade my five contracts. I don't know. There's always some kind of stupid rules with these um, funded accounts. Like there's something going on that you don't like. I want an end of day calculating account that's not scaling, that doesn't have a daily drawdown. If my loss limit is 5,000, that's how much I should be able to lose. I don't need these stupid rules. They're just designed to trip you up. Okay, so we got our scalp here. We got one, two, um, we could do three entries before I pull back so we can get one more.
And these candles are green. You might not be able to see it on the video, but they're green. I see we've got this big minus development in the volume profile. We could come down and test that um, was what I was thinking earlier. So I was trying to short. That's why I'm reading this account. But I gave up on that idea and now I'm looking for us to break the high here. Order filled. And we got our scalp. I'm taking two contracts. I'm taking off 10 ticks at one contract and the other one I'm going to let run. We'll see how this works. My stops set at 80 ticks. Um, right now it's at 20 because I'm at the pivot, which is, should be stop filled. I'm out. So what was that, two or three? I, I lost count. So we came up one, two, three. Now I'm not going to enter anymore until we get pulled back to the 10 EMA. And then the, the rules are the same for um, shorts, you know, just the opposite. Let me go find a short entry. I'm sure we have some. Here we go. Okay, so here we are in short entries now. So the price should be below the, the MA ribbon. The 10 EMA should be below the 10 EMA ribbon. And you should see some space between them. You don't, you know, like this is enough space. You could take that one. But when it's inside, like here, no. Um, okay, so we came down. We have the first pullback. That's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, until we pull back to the 10 EMA. So that, that was a nice long run, but I don't take more than three. So we pulled down, here's one entry, two entries, and three entries. That would have been the last one that I would agree to enter, okay? And this is not a good entry for us. This is not a good entry for us. This is a good entry. The bar is red. It's um, below the 10 EMA and the MA, 58 MA ribbon. The bubble bar is red. The long-term bar is red. Even the ADX is above 20. This was a good entry for a scalp. And then once it pulled back to the 10 EMA, you could get another entry. But um, you see when the bars are outlined in white, it's a pullback. That means the short-term, when the short-term bubble bar on the BB MACD is red it outlines the bars in red when it's green it outlines the bars in green when it's in a pullback in white it outlines them in white so you know not to enter there it doesn't meet your rules this one meets your rules one here one two three that's it and that that entry would have stopped you out so three in a run those are the rules it's a really easy strategy I've got a link to my Google Drive in the video descriptions. The templates for this chart are there. So are the indicators that you need. I, I don't have many indicators on here. I've got the chart watermark, which is, just tells you what, what instrument you're on and what you know frame time frame you're on. That's this here. The bar status by Ninzarenko is this here. These two lines tell you when the next um, the next green brick prints when they get to that price and the red brick will print when it gets to that price and you'll be able to see it. Um, I can't move it over, but it tells you the price. The MA trend grabber is a whole indicator system. That's what this white ribbon is here. This gray it out area. I um connection. Oh, that's not good. I got rid of everything but the MA ribbon and I changed it. In the indicator out of the box sets it at uh, 32. I've changed it to 50. Um, so what it is is the 50 open, close, and um, it might be the high. And it's 
filled in, okay? And then I've got a 10, oh, the break even plus, plus indicator is these buttons that you see here. It helps me break even plus a couple ticks. Um, order line decorator tells me is when I enter, it'll tell me the, the monetary value of my positions. Price line is just this pink line moving up and down exactly where that shows me exactly where the price is. Target filled. The BB MACD is this down here. The VMA. Hmm, what is the VMA? Oh, this is a volume moving average. Here we go. I've got this is a volume moving average set at 10. And then I've got uh, order flow volume profile, which you only have access to that um, indicator if you have a lifetime license in Ninja. And then the ADX down here, you know, and we have a, a line set at 20. Below 20, there's not enough volatility in the market, ideally, to take a trade. So that's all that's on here. It's a pretty simple chart. You could recreate this in any platform. If you're not using nin um, if you're not using Ninja Trader, you could easily recreate We'll recreate this plat indicators set up in another platform. You just need different indicators. You know, I've got a BB MACD. It's set to 30, 80, and 10. And this is a, it's a volume moving average set at 10 with a volatility period of nine. The uh, MA ribbon, you should be able to find that indicator for any, any platform you're on. And I have it, again, it's set to 50 open, close, and high. Or is it high, low, and open? I think it's high, low, and open. I forget now, hold on, now I gotta, now I gotta look. And this indicator will do all kinds of funky things. It'll, co you know, color your bars. Um, there's a lot that gives you signals. Let's see here. It's the high, the low, and the close. That's all that is. Um, these white arrows are the MA trend grabber signals. It's weird we didn't break even. Let's do that now. Did we break the high? Not yet. I'm probably going to buy back in. Do I have enough? Yeah.
so we're pretty close to the target and usually on NQ when we're close to the target we get to it so I'm gonna bank on that and double my position here this should just about take care of my um, negativity in that one I'm gonna put my stop at 48 I'm gonna leave it to break even if I if I get stopped out I'll just re-enter And we're gonna look for a short, I mean, for an entry here now. See if we get one. So this little green arrow that's printed here is an entry printed by this guy here. So that means there's an entry. This is about to turn. It, it gives you a heads up. It's not completely mm -hmm. an entry yet until this bubble bar closes, but it's telling you it's probably gonna be an entry. So. And it's an entry on the BBMACD. We're not, that doesn't meet our rules for scalping, but that's what that means there. I'm moving my stop up to nine. I'm locking in fifty point uh fifty dollars. Fifty seven dollars covers my commissions. I, I mean I think we should be safe at fifty. If it comes below fifty, then uh, that's not good. Order filled. And we got an entry. Stop filled. And it was a good scout. Order. Let me get back in. Stop filled. That was quick. We didn't get any good runners. Come on now, let's go. Alright, I've locked in 73. Now we should get moving. So we took this one, I got back in here. Now I gotta wait for a pullback. Come on, a little more, a little more.
So on the left, we have an example of a swing trade, and on the right, we have an example of scalping. Um, this was the entry for the swing trade here. I got in and got stopped out, and I just got back in here um, as we pulled off of the ribbon, which is totally acceptable. The rules for the scalping are not the same as the rules for swing trading. Um, I initially had my stop down, I think down under the ribbon, maybe under here. Um, and then I just moved my stop up. My targets are, I'm targeting the high of the day, just below the high of the day, just in case we don't, you know, we could come up and make almost a high. Might not break the target high. Target filled. out of that now. And then I'm going to run it up to 100 to the next round number, see how it goes. And I'll just be moving my, every pullback, I'll just move my stop under each pullback uh, pivot. So I have essentially recovered this one account here. And I was negative 1,200. Now I, I made that up in two or three trades, I think, on just trading micros. You know, I, I'm trading 10 micros. I'm able to break out my targets. My risk isn't that great. You know, I can be wrong a good bit and still be profitable. You only have to be right like 55% of the time if your risk to reward is aligned correctly. And mine is here. I'm going to leave my stop down below 50 for this last position. We have not, did we get, did we quite break that high? I can't tell. Nope, we have not. So I'm going to re-enter. Order filled. Put my stop down here. I'm targeting the high. Right there. This one's going back up. I'm going to put my stop at 48. I'm below this pivot here. I should have safety here. If not, you know, it could sweep down. That could be as high as we're going. Maybe we're not going to break the high. We'll just do a double top here. It looks to me like the high for the day is at 108.72.75. So this was that other indicator. Here it is. It tells you me the so I'm risking $180. My first target is 270. My second target is 164. So that's a good risk to reward. I'm going to lock in my stop, so I'm at risk free now, plus six ticks or six dollars. I'm looking down here.
no entry on the scalping chart here. On the swing side, my I'm entering pullbacks. Um, on following the long term bar and obviously the MA and the 10 uh, EMA or volume moving average. Target filled. We didn't get an entry on the scalp chart. You know, the the bubble, 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 bubble bars just turned green again. So we didn't have an entry there. It looks like it's pulling back now, but we're at the um, resistance R3. So I'm not going to take a long into that. I'd have to get above it first. All right, once um, the price breaks this high here, I will move my stop up to the recent pivot. You don't want to do it right here because until we break this one, it's not really a pivot, it's just a pullback. So now we need it to um, break here and then you can move it to here. All right, now we can move our we can move to the pivot. Order filled. Target stop here. filled. Nice. So this was the pullback to the 10 EMA, first entry, that's just the second entry. Now we could do one more. Unless it breaks here and then I don't want to, to probably do that. Order filled. This is the third one. 
So we went up. There was the first entry. Oh, excuse me. That's the first entry. That's the second Target entry. Target filled. And that's the second entry. We've got our first part. Our second one's running a little bit. Stop right. filled. Let me move this guy. I'm going to put him right under the pivot here. Right below 80. Let's get it. No more entries here. We had one, two, three. I'm not going to take any more there until it pulls back fully into the 10 EMA or the 10 moving average. Stop filled. Out. Okay, so we're out now on the little swing trade, too. Let me get my charts back together here. All right, so I am ending green in this account today. Um, we made $449 on a couple scalps with two um, NQ contracts. I don't think um, trading the micros was worth it. Um, I think I was up to, I mean, half of your account gains goes to commission so if you make 180 you're only like getting 60 or 90 um and i didn't have any losers so if i lose you know so if every 40 dollars i make i clear 20 dollars after commissions then every loser i take i'm losing double really i'm losing the amount i risked plus my you know, um, commissions. So I don't think it was worth it, um, to do this in the micro and the micros, but I'm going to clear that micro account and we'll try again tomorrow. So for the risk management strategies on NQ, MNQ, I'm trading 10 uh, micros. Okay. And that's the equivalent to one contract on the mi mi mini contract. And I've got it broken out. So I'm taking four contracts off at 60 ticks and four contracts off at 100 ticks profit and two contracts off at 240. And I'm going in with a 40, 40 tick stop loss. And then my um, strategy is set to break even once I get to one to one risk reward. So if I'm risking one, when I get 40 ticks in profit, Excuse me, if I'm risking 40 ticks, once I get the 40 ticks in profit, it moves me to break even. Just protects me from like excess losses. Um, now, I don't stick to this all the time necessarily. Like if the 40 ticks is too much, like maybe my stop needs to be below the pivot here and it's only like 20 ticks, you know, I move it. If I move it to 20 ticks, I don't really mess with my um, targets. You know, my targets are again a reference point. I don't always stick to those levels. Like I'm looking for logical levels. Sometimes I have to move it a couple ticks up or down. But the important thing is that I always make sure I'm getting at least one and a half to two times my risk on every trade. So I can be right 55% of the time. And that's for swing trades. For the scalps, and they're essentially the same setups. I mean, only on the swing side, every pullback here is a setup. You're not waiting for signals. When you're swing trading, this bar is green. These bars are green. The, the price is above the ribbon. And you see we're trending strongly when the uh, moving average is above the uh, ribbon. You're buying all the pullbacks. You should be buying all of these pullbacks. So many entries right here. 
And then once price crosses over, you should get out, you know? So you say, you, here it is, you got your enter here. Say you entered here, right? And then the price pull back to here, you move your stop. To here, you move your stop. So you would've got stopped out. Then you would've got, you would've got a little profit, but you would've got stopped out. Then you entered again here, and your stop was here. You moved your stop to here. You know, your runner, um, your first two targets would have got hit. Your runner would have gotten stopped out. You had another entry. Here. Um, and you would have moved your stop to here. And then moved your stop to here. And then you would have gotten stopped out on your runner here. You know, that's kind of how you swing trade. Um, and, you're, you know, you can do, do it two ways. You can keep your stop below the MA ribbon, below the pivot, below the pivot and the MA ribbon. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't like to be above 40 ticks. So, I mean, that's a lot for me. I really like to be two bars. Like, I only want to be two bars. And um, on the swing trading, I like my Renko's to be like, um, you know, four to five points per bar. So I don't really want to risk more than 10 points, you know, so that's what 10 times four is 40. So if I can't get in with, I mean, if I have to risk too much for the trade, I just don't take the trade. So then for the scalps, you know, we went over that. We want this short term bar to match the long term bar before we enter. So we just an extra level of confluence, you know, it'll protect us. So we're not entering with no stop on a pullback. OK. Um, and I don't agree with Alpine on, you know, a wide stop. Yes. A no stop is a bad idea. You know, your stop should be at like the, the mo most recent major pivot. You know, and you could use the long term Renko's for that pivot level. You know, you could even do like a medium term Renko chart for, you know, this is very small. It's only two point bars. So on this side, you could do like, um, you know, maybe you could put them at like 25 and five. You know, you could have a medium term uh, ninja. I mean, not ninja, ninja Renko chart to help you with stop placement. But I don't think you should use no stop. You know, it's better to lose $500 than to bust your account. So I'll continue scalping on um, uh, Sim and NQ. I will copy. I'm going to use the copy trader. I'm going to trade from Sim, copy to Sim, and I'll see if it works. Just copying it to one account, and we'll... Um, you know, kind of go and just test it out. But off the cuff, I don't, from just what I saw today, I think trying to scout micros is a ridiculous waste of time. You should be swing trading micros. So here's the automated strategy for the Alpine scalps. Um, I've got two contracts here. I'm going in with an 80 tick stop loss. Initially, I'm taking 10 ticks of profit on the first contract. And I have the second contract set to take profit at 400 ticks. And then I've got an um, auto break even at eight ticks plus six. And then I've got a um, an auto trail set up every eight ticks, it moves up. So, you know, when you see I'm catching those little runners, that's what's happening there. So I think um, when it breaks even, I'm gonna click on to break even plus four just to lock a little more in to cover some of them commissions and then for um, for scalping the micros I was doing eight here same same kind of thing I was just taking half and half but like I said with these ones the commissions are so high that um, I, I just didn't feel like it was profitable like it, I had like 190 in um, gains but actual gains were only like 80. So I don't think, I mean, I think it has merit, you know, a lot of potential on minis, but you know, you just have to be really careful with your stop loss. You, you need two contracts, I think, to do this. Um, 
I'm going to keep trying it in sim. I'm not ready to trade it on real like accounts yet. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to say was, you know, you can create these charts. You don't need Ninja Trader to use these charts, like the chart templates, obviously you do, but you can recreate them in anything. You know, all you need is a BB MACD, Renko bars, um, the ADX, and you can create um, your own MA ribbon. You just load three EMAs on there at 50 and make one set to the um, the high, one set to the low, and one set to the close. It'll be just like a ribbon. Um, and then, you know, for the volume profile levels, instead of using volume profile, what you could use are the Fibonacci pivots which is what I have on here. They're just, it's the daily pivot points and it gives you the support levels below and the resistance levels above and you can use those to, you know, be your targets. All right, well, that's all I've got for this one. Um, I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.